that good. morning it's been a while hasn't it i haven't been out of my kayak i think since very early january just after christmas when i went out to bex hill and i caught all those whiting loads of them and dogfish the reason why i haven't been out uh, on the kayak is the weather one is the main reason it's been appalling uh, so many storms this year the sea's just been atrociously rough and we haven't been able to get out at all ever um, and on the days which it has been calm, unfortunately I've been at work. Then I got COVID um, and then I'm one of those patients, unfortunately, with um, a long COVID. So um, I had to recover for a bit. I had to go to the gym and get my fitness up, which I've done, and uh, finally feel better after five weeks of finally managing to get out. What a beautiful morning to be out as well. You can probably see the smile on my face. I've not been like this in I would say probably six months since Cornwall. I went there in October and the, the last buzz I had on, on the kayak and actually fishing to be honest was then. My, <laughs> the, the kayak is the king of all fishing. Forget boats, forget sieves. The, the, the kayak is my heart, it's my soul. I, I feel at home on this thing. Um, lots, I love boats as well but this is just awesome. Right, the plan of the day is to go out to a mark where we caught loads of rays this time last year. Um, we had loads of rays, I think, one day. I think we had seven or eight. So we're gonna go out there and just see what it's like. So yeah, that's what we're doing. We've got squid, herring, we've got loads of different baits. Right, I'll see you out there. Now the rigs I'm using today for these rays are so simple. We've just got a multiplier which doesn't matter you can use fix spool whatever you like um, we've just got a running boom like so we're just going to pop a weight on in this case i'm going to put quite a heavier weight on it on the bottom just a little boom weight like that attach it on and then all it is is, it is a flowing trace with a hook and we're just going to start off with a bit of squid and then on another one put a bit of bluey on so that just slides up and down then you've got a little clip there you're just going to clip your hook your bit of line on there with your swivel and your hook about four inch four foot trace 20 foot of water and we're high tides at uh, half 10 today i think and it's only 6 38 so got a nice bit of flood we'll go up to about 30 foot and the weather seems to be settled a bit oh, i'm so buzzing <laughs> right bait on cast out let's go so the first bait we're going to send down is just half a squid these are really big squid so we're choosing half a squid these are really bloody it might look off it's not off it's a different type of squid uh really bloody squid look at that beautiful bait i'm going to whip that with elastic and um and get it out there um, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to all the subscribers on this channel. Um, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. It means the absolute world, you know, for this channel to be growing. I put so much time and effort in, and that's not a boast. That's just, that is just the truth, you know. F to do a YouTube, it, it really does um, take a lot of time and a lot of effort. And I really hope you enjoy the videos because um, I'd be upset if you didn't. I reckon dogfish within a couple of minutes. The sea's gorgeously flat. We're meeting. Uh, a chap called Kevin, he's coming out. Uh, he'll be probably be arriving now, setting up on the beach. Right, one bait out, let's get the other three rods out and uh, try and get some fish for you guys. What are these? Yeah, they're my concrete weights, my six ounce ones. I'm gonna uh, try and prove to you today that they work. Right, so we've got uh, three rods out now. Uh, we've got both, two on squid and then we've got one on some lug and herring just to see what's down there, just a little bit. Um, and while I'm here, I just thought I'd take the opportunity to say uh, how I set out my kayak. So in front of me, I like to, I've like i got a nice big, uh, I think this is the 5CV fish finder. Um, nice clear view on there, maps, all, all sorts. That's fantastic. Nice big screen in front. That's all good. Um, and then on my sessions down here, I put all me, just my, my bits and bobs, like hooks and stuff I'm going to use for session, bait, elastic, that sort of thing. And then this side, I put weights and then me used reels as well, my 
you know, wind on rig reels. They will just go in there once they've been used. Um, so I cast it out, they're there, so when I bring it in, I know where they are quickly and I can just get them wrapped up. Um, that's a GoPro stick thing which I'm working on. Um, we've got a couple of rod holders. I've got one here which I, I wanted actually it back here, but the tripod I'm using at the moment for my camera has uh, snapped, so I've got to keep I've got to keep this on here so that I can attach this lanyard to there so it doesn't fall in if we have an incident. Um, so it's actually attached to the actual stick and not nothing. Um, and then what I'll do, this is I think really important, is get all your bait which you're going to use probably for the next hour or two uh, next to you so you're not constantly going behind you to your bait board so as you can see down here i've got everything set up i've got a couple of blueies there some fresher lugs some a disgusting lug the soul would love um, and then i've got my big squid and uh, at the back i've got my bait ball on there my chopping board and when i want to prepare a bait i can just bring that round if i need to have it on my lap and and, and do what i need to do um, so yeah, I've got, obviously got the, the kayak box back there. I've, I've done a video on sort of roughly how to make one of those. Uh, all the rods just slide in. And yeah, apart from that, that's, that's really simple. I like to have a bit of preparation when I'm on the kayak um, because if things go mental, which sometimes they do, uh, you want to know where everything is. And then, oh, that's a good point. I've got all my gear. I've got just a little tub here that I've used and converted. And that sits really snugly in there. And I've got my knife, my scissors. I've got all my bits and bobs I might need quickly uh, there so i've got everything to hand i'm not having to go under and all that and then under my seat obviously this is the hobie outback under my seat i just pull out i've got the uh, my tackle box which slides under i've got i've got this which i got out of my cart box it's just a bit of foam you could pretty much use anything and what i do is if it gets rough um, and i need to get in quite quickly um i still want to take the rigs off because the hooks and stuff swinging around isn't a good idea i'll quickly wind in and i'll quickly stick them in this and wind them on this because they're a lot easier than the rig winders and I'll sort it out when I get home. So yeah, that's that's a good little uh, good little tip actually. Have a bit of foam like that and then just pop it under there. You can put all your rigs on there, broken ones, used ones on the session and then when you go home you've got them all on there which you've used so you know which ones you've used, no, confused, no confusion. Um, and then you can change the hooks, you can change whatever you need to or you can just get rid of them. But yeah, yeah, got a bite on this one. All, so all of a sudden you see they come on the feed all of a sudden they just they just go i'm just gonna let it let it let it develop a little bit right we're into our first fish don't feel too heavy so i'm gonna say a dogfish <laughs> a dogfish as expected there you go just on the end to be honest with you i don't mind dogfish because we're gonna keep some for bait uh, for a skate trip that we is upcoming so we are going to keep some right i'm going to uh, unhook him and then we're going to try and catch a better species all right i might have another fish on here it's been tapping away for a bit i'm not sure to be honest it's got a very big weight on it so let's have a look we have got a fish on oh what a surprise another doggy another doggy on that oh there we go look hang on what's that weight that weight is one of my homemade concrete ones. It's working fine. Another dogfish, but uh, as I said, don't mind them because they're bait for a um, skate trip. So, and uh, my freezer's gone table, so hopefully we'll get, pick up a new one today and we'll get some fresh dogfish. There you go, there's another one. There we go, boys. There we go, that's a better bite. That's a better bite. Let's see, will it be a ray? Oh, oh no, I don't think it is. I'm going to say dogfish, unfortunately. Just not, it's just not pulling as much as I'd want it to. Yeah. Another doggy. Another dogfish. Now, at the start of the video, I said uh, the reason why I hadn't been out is because there's loads of storms, and there were some massive storms. We had uh, loads of proper, proper storms, like almost uh, hurricanes, you know, that sort of strong winds, 70 mile an hour winds. And that changes the seabed dynamically. Now I'm just wondering, it's, this is just an observation. Now it's high water now and it's only 26.5 foot. And I look back on some notes um, of this exactly the same spot and at low water, even on a neap tide, we were hitting 30 foot. So I'm wondering if four foot of seabed, four foot of sand has been moved elsewhere. And that might be why the rays aren't here at the moment. It might be that they're a little bit further out, more 
30, 35 foot out. So we'll swing around. If we get no bites, then uh, definitely gonna, oh, we we're saying that, we've got a bite just on this one. So yeah, as I was saying, I'm wondering if the sand, four foot of it, has been moved elsewhere and the rays are a bit further out. But we'll go and anchor out further out if, if we don't get anything by, by say, 10, 11 o'clock. Or we could go and try up near the pier. As long as it's calm, we'll be good to go. Just had another big take on the um, sardine. Just want to feel it one more time. Oh, no, have I missed it again? No. No, we're in this time. We're in. Yep, there we go. That's a ray. That's a ray. Hopefully. Oh, has he come off? Oh, he might have just come off. He might have just come off. Oh, he just come off. No. Ah, oh, look at that. Demolished. Oh, they're annoying me today. That was a bloody ray. Ooh, might have a little fish on here. Probably a dogfish, but let's have a little look. It's, eh. Light, light gear, so it's probably a doggy. More, more skate bait. More skate bait. I should start calling this dogfish channel. We haven't had any good fish for a while. But believe me, the next kayak video is going to be insane. It's going to be about three parts, so it's going to be wicked. Right, let's get this in the box and uh, put another bait out there. <laughs> Hopefully the fishing gets better soon. Just want one ray for you guys. There's the sardine rod going again. Or it did. Because what a ray will do is if you've got a bit of bait on the seabed, so let's use let's use this key ring for the bait. The bait's there, your ray is here, and it, it, will, it will flap over it and it will sit on it. And, and, it will, and you, that, obviously moving around like that, you will look at the bite and it's not actually eating it, it's just sitting on it and it's just sniffing it, checking it out getting ready to eat it. Um, so a lot of the time you've got to wait until it demolishes it, actually takes it and then runs off of it. But yeah, a lot of the time it just comes over and what you're seeing on the rod tip is its wings flapping. So uh, yeah, we've just got to wait for it to hook itself or have a proper pull, pull, pull and then you can sort of strike it. But oh, they're playing hard to get, they're playing hard to get. Well, 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 this is a first. I was winding in my squid and um, just nipped in the tiny little lip. Turbot. Might have been a brill. I'm not sure, I didn't have enough clothes. Come right to the side of the boat and it was just drifting towards me and I thought, oh my God, it's come off the hook by this point, just because it's a tiny little, tiny little, about that big it was. Just zoomed to the boat and I thought, I haven't got net. No, I didn't bring my net because I'm not bass fishing. Um, oh. <laughs> just shows what different species are out here. Um, oh, that would have been a good species, wouldn't it, to, to have for the, competition oh well it's what it is I, I didn't even think about my camera i was like mesmerized by it. I thought, what the hell is this in eastbourne a turbot little brill whatever it was oh well it is what it is not to worry oh dear right i was just getting over that 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 turbot brill moment i think it wasn't on camera so no one's going to believe me but i swear my mum's life it happened um we've got a place though Little place. There you go. Oh, I can't believe that turbot. I don't know what it was. I think it was a turbot. Or maybe a brill. Oh. oh, well. Here we go, boys. Here we go. There's a better bite on that blue rod there. I'm just, I was just casting out a rod as it was bending over. There he is. Something on there. Let's have a little feel. Seems like I can feel him pulling. Oh, I'm gonna strike him. Oof. Yep, yep, here we go. Here we go, right, finally, here we go, we're in. Oh, we're in, we're in. Here we go, better fish, better fish. I'm playing very, very carefully. I do not wanna lose him this time. We've got that Cox and Rule hook on, which I've done. Um, and I let him, as I said, a bit of, we, we've changed tide now and we've swung round and we've had a place. I've seen a turbot brill. Um, 
and then whatever this is going to be. Oh, can you imagine if this is like a 20 pound turbot or something ridiculous like that? That would be absolutely mental. Can't be a dogfish, please don't. Yes, it's a ray, there we go. Oh, camera nearly went in the water. Mr. Ray, there he is. Mr. Formback Ray, fantastic. Oh, buzzing, first one of the year. Oh, he's not that well looked, so I better be a bit careful. Yes! Born back Ray and me weights. Look at that, those crappy little weights that everyone had a whinge about. Yeah. Oh, they're all, they're less dense in water than lead. You can't do that. They work, because I've caught all my fish pretty much today on those. But I'm buzzing, first one of the year. First one of the year. And that was taken on Bluey. There you go, hook out. First one of the year for me. Um, and I'm also gonna try this. Um, and I'm just gonna try, I've got an idea. I've actually forgot my sheet, which does the, um, which verifies your fish. So I'm gonna get my, thing up here hang on right Jake Davison 46 small boat sea fishing page form back ray fantastic absolutely buzzing let's get him back there you go Mr Ray see you later down he goes. Right boys, I think we're into another fish here. Um, possibly. It's bending a lot, but it's not really pulling as such. So, which makes me think it's not a ray. So, oh, uh, what is it? No, it is. Ah, it's a spider crab. They're in, are they? Okay. Okay. Oh. There you go, Mr. Spider crab eating me squid. I'm probably trying to destroy me line in the process. Oh, I've got a bite on that rod now. There you go. Mr. Spider crab, they're actually very delicious to eat. That one's had a bit of a, look, he hasn't got much of a pincer there. He must have had a bit of a scrap. Um, that one's a bit small for eating, but um, yeah, delicious to eat. And if they're uh, soft and if they're shelling, they're very good bait apparently. But yeah, that is what we call a spider crab. He can go back for another day. Yeah, I don't know how clear it is, but you can see a big shoal of herring coming across. Just coming across there. Won't be mackerel at this time of year. That'll be herring. To catch those, if you wanted to, you need tiny little hooks like that. So what are they? Size 16. Uh, and just a little white, little white feather. That's all you need. I really should have bought me a uh, mackerel rod out and geared it up with them, but I haven't got any feathers at the moment with, of that size, so I remember to bring them out next time. A lot. Hang on, let's get to sort this out. There you go, another. Let's try and actually show them to you nicely, not a, like an absolute fool. There you go, another nice little place. Right, so the time's quarter to 11. Um, the, it's probably gusting about 12, 40 miles an hour with a solid sort of 10 mile an hour wind. And you'll have seen the tide's picked up a bit. Now, you'll hear people a lot of the time say wind, we're gonna have wind against tide, so that's gonna be a bit choppy. And what that means, basically, is the wind is coming from the west at the moment, so it's coming towards my face, right? So it's going this direction, but the tide, is ebbing, it's going out, as I said earlier. It goes towards Littlehampton, so it's going that way. So you have this, this crossover of wind against tide, and that makes it, that churns it up, because it, it's, it's conflicting. You know, if you've got tide going in that way and the wind going in that way, even if it's a strong wind, it's, it's all going in the same direction and it's pushing it flat. Not always, it'll still be choppy if it's, you know, a good sort of 12 to 15, 60 mile an hour gust, but it's better. You know, and you get this little chop, which we've got now, little chop, 
what I call it. It's because when it gets tired. Oh, it's a very good bite here. It was almost, it's weird, it was almost like a lime bite. Like something had come across there. I suppose it could have been a bit of wood or something, but I didn't see anything on the sonar. Just gonna let it, just gonna keep, oh, there we go, here we go. Yep, we're in, here we go. Yeah, this is better, this is better. Yes, boys, yes, boys. The gear's gonna have to go down. Yes, this is a big ray. That was a proper bite. That was a very, very nice bite. Do you know what? This isn't fighting like a ray. I mean, it most likely is, but it's not fighting like a ray at all. Just gonna play it very carefully, very gently. Take me time. Boys, look at that bend in the rock. I can't do anything. It's just pulling me down. I can do absolutely nothing and just hold it there and tire it out. Oh, well, it's a big ray, boys. And it's got a caught around the other line, so it felt a bit bigger. Oh, it's a nice one. Right, I've got my hook link. Oh, I didn't think it was gonna be a ray, but because it's caught around the other, me have a weight, that's why it feels a bit. Right, let's get out of there. Oh, got him. There we go. Beautiful fish. Right, the reason I thought this was so big one, it's a nice fish. I mean, it's about eight pounds probably. That's quite a nice ray. Excellent. Form back. Um, the reason I thought it was a big, big fish was because that rod there has got a bite on it and it's crossed over that line so I'm basically winding in two fish might be another ray on the end there I'll have to have a look in a minute I'll try and unhook this one. Oh, God, he really smashed that that was on the bluey bait that's uh that's had both rays that bluey oh well, actually no it was a squid it was a squid bluey wrap it was keep your mouth open there we go hooks out and beautiful Eastbourne, form back ray. What a beautiful fish. Got all the spikes on them. Really spiky, they, they hurt you, they do. Spikes underneath as well, as you can see. Yeah, stunning. Right, let's get that one back. About eight, nine pound. Yeah. There it is. Uh, uh, they do swallow it quite often, but this one was fine. I managed to get it out nicely. Right, let's put him back in the tide and then nudge him down. Down he goes. Right, we've got another fish on here. Let's just turn the radio down a bit. I think it might be a ray. Just a small one, I think, this time. I was fiddling with my, my phone and just sorting a few bits out. It's having a good old pump. It doesn't feel like. It won't be a dogfish, not like this. Let's have a little look. Is it another ray? Oh my God! Oh my God! Whoa! Yes! I got one! I got one! A, a brill or a turbot! I got one! <laughs> Look at that! I don't even know what it is. I think it's a brill. It's the first one I've ever caught. Ah, I got one! Yes! I can't believe it. I, I told you the story earlier and I thought no one's going to believe me. No one is going to believe me. And, um, and I've got one. Oh, the rod's nearly falling in. Right, Jake, calm down. Calm down. It's just a small fish. Oh, I'm buzzing. That has that has literally made made my month. Oh, I'm all in a kerfuffle because I was so excited. I was really desperate to catch one of these. Um, once I saw it come up, I thought, oh, maybe I'll get another one. Probably not. The chance of getting another one is just minuscule. Like it's not going to happen. Oh, I'm so, I'm absolutely buzzing, man. Oh, sorry. I'm look, I'm like a child. I know it's ridiculous. But new species. Oh my God! Look at that mouth. Look at that mouth on it. I'll check the damage, make sure he's okay. Look at that. I don't know what it is. A brill or something. Who knows? Let's try and get him back.
Oh, wow, that was absolutely amazing. I got very excited because, uh, you know, I was telling you the story earlier, as I said, and I just didn't think you'd believe me, and now I've actually caught one. And it's a turbot, it's not a brill. A turbot, even better. Oh, we've got little nodules on the back. Uh, I had a little Google as well. First one ever on the kayak. In fact, first one ever I've ever caught, ever caught. Now, if there are <coughs> small ones down there, and I've seen two today, you never know if there's a bigger one out there. Interesting times with this climate and change. It's definitely causing some interesting fishing. Right, well the fishing session's slowly coming to an end now. It's uh, 10 past one and uh, I've still got a few bits to do. I've got to set the sieve up because we're going to try and take that the boat out tomorrow. Um, I've got to pick up a chest freezer because my freezer died yesterday night with a load of bait in it. I say it died yesterday night. I found out that it had died at some point and all my, I found out my fish was defrosted last night. So God knows how long that's been like that for. But there was still some ice in there, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, one thing I just wanted to say was when you're packing away, and you know, you, you, you can do it leisurely, it makes such a big difference but to have everything back where it belongs. Uh, it makes beaching the kayak, I think, um, a little bit safer because sometimes you've got loads of gear everywhere and, up and just all over your place. And uh, when you're coming into the beach, I don't think it's a great idea to have all bits on your feet and everywhere uh, in case you do go over. One, you lose loads of kit, and two, it might stop you from easily getting out. But yeah, I've just got one last rod out and I'm gonna wind that one in, in in five minutes. And then we're gonna head back to the car and get that back for about two o'clock. So huge, huge thanks for joining me uh, on today's kayak adventure. I hope you enjoyed it, I certainly have. It's nice to be back out on the kayak doing a kayak videos because I know a lot of you, uh, that's where my original subscribers came from. My first thousand were probably mostly from kayak fishing. So I really appreciate it. Sorry I haven't done too much. I'm going to be doing a lot more soon. Oh, sorry, I thought I had a bite there. It'd be nice just to get a fish on the last cast, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, subscribe for turning if you haven't already and you've enjoyed the videos. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them below. As always, we're very friendly here. And uh, thank you for joining Muscle Fishing for the last whatever long this video was. Half an hour, say. Great. Cheers.